hey there, everyone. Uh, Bobby D here with Virtual Event Fundraising, and I'm with my friend, Julia Campbell, who is, uh, I, I've been watching her on LinkedIn for probably the last year. It just completely blows my mind with so much great social media information for nonprofits and how to communicate. Uh, so I'm glad to have her here with us today. So Julia, tell us who you are, what you do, yes. how you help nonprofits. Well, uh, I'm Julia Campbell. This is my 10th year working for myself, actually in March. I was going to have a big 10-year celebration, but that, of course, didn't happen. Um, celebrating virtually. I work with small and mid-sized nonprofits on their digital marketing and digital fundraising strategies. Awesome. So, okay, we're talking about new normal. Yes. We're here. We're in it. It's like, yes. ah, it's a crazy time. Uh, yes. Maybe in a nonprofit, their event has either been canceled or postponed or they're pivoting to a virtual event or something like that yeah. in the social world and the communication in the world. Now what, what, what can they do? Right. The very first thing I'm telling people to do is acknowledge that it sucks. So you don't have to send out an email that says, Hey, this really sucks, but acknowledge that there's a loss and that you're grieving, even if it's just a tiny event, some nonprofits are grieving the loss of their 50th anniversary gala. Yeah a big race that they've had every year. And sometimes it's just a small fashion show or a small little local gathering, but there is that loss. So mm -hmm. be honest with your donors and your supporters and your attendees and just come together and say, I know this is a really scary time. This is the decision that we made and this is why we made it. Now, mm -hmm. I know that there is a lot of fear for some reason around this being political, even though I can't even get started on that. <laughs> it's not political there. to keep your donors and your attendees safe. That's not, that's never political. So don't worry about that. Just worry about being a human, have some kind of communication. As soon as you know what's going on, come out from a human use a video, have your executive director take a video, kids in the background even better. So yeah. any way that you can humanize yourself and show the nonprofit that, show the donors that you're human too and you're going through this too. Um, and the other step that I recommend, it's pretty controversial, I've been seeing getting backlash for it on Twitter, is okay. that you do ask for people to donate their registration fee. Yeah. So, I think that's completely reasonable. I've seen that a lot. I know that a lot of us did donate our registration fee to the nonprofit technology conference because of the community that was built up and the love that we have for the organization. It was kind of a no brainer. Sure. Right. Some people are financially strapped and really scared and won't have the money to do that right now, right. but giving them that option and ask, telling them exactly what that means and why that's important. So don't be afraid to tell people when you're canceling this event, maybe there's not a next step, but we're going to keep you posted. You know, we're going to keep you posted. We're going to keep you in the loop. We really want your feedback. We want your involvement. You're a valued, trusted member of this community. And once we do have a virtual setup, once we have post, once it's postponed, once we know more details, but we are thinking of you as a human of your family in this crazy turbulent time. Nice, nice. Yeah, and you have to make the ask. I mean, you have to show, look, mm -hmm. this is what the need is, and you have to make the ask. And if somebody can't swing it, it's okay. We get it. You know, yep. you're, you know we'll give it back. But then this yeah. is what it, you know, it could do for us. Have you heard Absolutely. of any organizations having that happen, and then maybe more donations coming in above and beyond that? Yes, actually. So I I heard of um, an organization that was doing a big walk, and they do a big walk for the cure in um in florida and because they built they they've been saying we're closely watching the news here are some other options that you can use to fundraise if you don't feel comfortable coming so they'd actually put a lot out in front so it wasn't nice. kind of just like wow it's canceled people kind of knew other venues to raise money but nice. they found that um because it's a health related charity that might be part of it but that just honestly communicating with their donors and saying look this is our biggest event we rely on this. We rely on you. We rely on your support every year. And breast cancer doesn't go away just because right. there's coronavirus now. So right. just really being honest and explaining the problem. And I did see an organization that I personally support send out a really heartfelt plea. It's a domestic violence organization. And they said, 
we are staffing our hotlines extra time. We're having extra staff members. We're doing texts. We're setting up something where people can text us. We're going to try to do virtual support groups. So they laid out all of the solutions they were creating to the problem. And they said, this is going to require a bigger investment than we're used to. So would you step up? And I'm a monthly donor to them. So it was like, an, for me, it was like, yes, absolutely. Yeah, totally. But I've also worked at a shelter. So if it's a cause that's very close to people's hearts, you know, if you're canceling an event and just letting people know, like, this is what's going to happen with the money. This is how you can contribute. But absolutely, they had to cancel their 50th anniversary gala. Aww. But sending out that email, they ended up, ended up recouping, not all of it, but not doing too, not doing too nice. badly. I think it, this week we're seeing not dust settle. I don't want to minimize what's going on, but we certainly are seeing people start to emerge out of that complete mm -hmm. shock and mm -hmm. start to plan for what's ahead. Right, right. And that and that's what we're doing here. We're giving tips and ideas of how to how to plan, you know, for what's ahead. So then I'm sure nonprofits are thinking, okay, like what's what's my best channel? I mean, is it email? Is it Facebook? Is it Twitter? Is it, you know, a live stream? Like what like, what do you suggest being the best channel to get these communications out there? Well, I think wherever your community is right now, I wouldn't jump on a new channel right now and just try to build an audience from scratch and kind right. of jump into the fray of like Twitter if you've never been on Twitter. Right. But if you have an email community, if you have an email newsletter, I mean, the print newsletter might be harder now that I think about it. I didn't even think about print. Right. I don't, I, I don't even know where it even go with my brain. Cause a lot of people send out print newsletters, but are people, I don't know. Is that a thing? I've, I don't know. So yeah. I would say email, I would say, um, Facebook live. And I know that's uncomfortable for a lot of organizations, right. but you could do a Facebook live with the executive director. You could do the development director mm -hmm. talking about what you need to know right now. What are the three things you need to know right now? Right. And how can you stay involved and how can you stay combating this problem that we're all together combating? Okay. So nice. if you're on Facebook using Facebook, but I would not recommend all of a sudden saying, oh, I'm going to now be on Instagram. It's going to be so hard. To we're going to be on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I mean, TikTok is an awesome place to, to really grow an audience. It's kind of like the Wild West yeah. out there. But if your audience is not on TikTok, right. then I wouldn't. Right, I right. wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it for the sake of doing it. So right, right. continue to do what you're doing and stay the course and try to build on what you're already doing successfully. Awesome. Well, good. Well, I want to just thank you, you know, for sure. the quick tips that you can provide. I mean, I'll put uh, uh, Julia's links below that you can check her out. I mean, she's everywhere. The Twitters, the LinkedIn's, the Facebooks. I mean, she's got so many. I like yeah. it, but <laughs> not everyone does. Right, right. But she's everywhere and, and so much valuable content on her Thank website you. as well, too. I've downloaded so many tools and I constantly send those out to my clients. So if you're looking to up your communications game, especially in the new normal and figure out kind of what your now what is, please talk to, mm. uh, to Julia. She's, uh, she's the one to be able to help you with that. Um, Julia, wow. enjoy your Thank time you. with, with your kids uh, here. Uh, and uh, and uh, I guess uh, we have to look at this as an opportunity to, uh, you know, look at those. Uh, We're going to get through it. Are. We are going to get we'll through, get it. through okay. it together. Thank you for putting together these resources and you know, we're all in this together doing what we, we can are. do. Awesome. Well, good. Well, thank you. Um, remember friends out in the nonprofit world, what you do matters, continue to be awesome. You are the ones that are going to change this world and make uh, yes. make it better. So thank you all again, Bobby D here with uh, virtual event mm -hmm. fundraising and uh, we'll see y'all later. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.